A floating point number is a number that has an integer part and a fractional part. To represent extremely large numbers or extremely small numbers, the decimal point in a decimal number system is moved to the left of all non-zero digits so that the mantisa becomes entirely fractional and the exponent is a power of 10. So for example, in the decimal number system, we have 3.14. 1593. We can rewrite this as 0.3141593 times 10 raised to 1. So that we have this mantisa part and an exponent part. Now, based on the IEEE. Dash 754 standard, a floating point number represented by 32 bits is called a single precision floating point number. If it consists of 64 bits, then it is called a double precision floating point number. Let's focus our attention to a single precision floating point binary number. The first bit is the sign bit, and the sign bit is represented by only one bit. The next set of bits is called the exponent bits and this is represented by 8 bits. The last 23 bits refers to the fractional part or the mantisa. This fractional part is represented by 23 bits. All in all, we have 32 bits. Again, when the floating point number is represented by 32 bits, this is called a single precision floating point binary number. Otherwise, if it's represented by 64 bits, then we have a double precision floating point binary number. So for example, the average mass of a Tesla Model 3 car is 1.611 times 10 raised to 3 kilograms. Convert 1.611 times 10 raised to 3 magnitude into single precision floating point number. So step 1, convert the decimal number. into a binary number without the exponent. So how do we get rid of that exponent? We do that by simply rewriting the number into 1, 6, 1, 1. So when we write the number in this form, we don't have to write the exponent part. It's now easy to convert this into a binary number using our repeated division method. 1, 6, 1, 1 divided by 2 equals 805 remainder 1. Next, 805 divided by 2 equals 402 remainder 1. 402 divided by 2 equals 201 remainder 0. 201 divided by 2 equals 100 remainder 1. 100 divided by 2 equals 50 remainder 0. 50 divided by 2 equals 25 remainder 0. 25 divided by 2 equals 12 remainder 1. 12 divided by 2 equals 6 remainder 0. 6 divided by 2 equals 3 remainder 0. 3 divided by 2 equals 1 remainder 1. 1 divided by 2 equals 0. So I now have a quotient that is equal to 0 so I can stop at this line but the quotient has a remainder of 1. So writing this from the 
most significant bit towards the least significant bit. We have a one one zero zero one zero zero one zero one one. So step two, express this as scientific notation with base two. So to do this, let me count the number of places so that I have a decimal point here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is equal to 1.1001001001. 1 times 2 raised to 10. So let me copy this answer here. So step 3, determine the sign bit. Since the initial number is positive, we are sure that, let me return to our given, this sign bit is 0. Step 4 is where things get tricky because it has something to do with the IEEE standard notation. Oh. So step 4, determine the exponent bits. So returning to our diagram, we are now writing this part. So due to the scientific notation in base 2 and the biasing of exponents, the IEEE standard form of single precision floating point number has this formula. If this is our single precision floating point number n, we can decompose this into groups of bits. The first bit refers to the sign bit and in algebraic form, this is equal to negative 1 raised to s. So s here is the sign bit. Obviously, if this is 0, then this will result to a sign bit of positive and if this is 1 this will result to a sign bit of negative next is the mantisa part which is 1 plus the fractional part or the mantisa part and then multiply to the exponent part which is 2 raised to e minus 127 so this term here minus 127 has something to do with the biasing of the exponent as required by the IEEE standard 754. In this equation, n refers to the single precision floating point number. S is the sine bit. M is the Manti support. Or the fractional part and finally E is the exponent. So going back to step 4, determine the exponent bits. So based on this formula, since we have an exponent of 10 here, we simply need to add this to 127. So one way to write this is um, E minus 127 is equal to um, 10. That's why E equals 10 plus 127. So here E equals exponent is equal to 137. But this is in decimal form. So we have to convert it into a binary number so that we can plug it here into this 8 bits component. So let's do the repeated division. 137 divided by 2 equals 68 remainder 1. 68 divided by 2 
equals 34 remainder 0. 34 divided by 2 equals 17 remainder 0. 17 divided by 2 equals 8 remainder 1. 8 divided by 2 equals 4 remainder 0. 4 divided by 2 equals 2 remainder 0. 2 divided by 2 equals 1 remainder 0. 1 divided by 2 equals 0. I now have a quotient of 0 so I can now stop at this line. However, my quotient has a remainder of 1. So writing this from the most significant bit to the least significant bit, we have uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Therefore, our exponent bits is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. For the last step, determine these mantisa bits. Determine the mantisa bits, then attach zeros on its right hand side until you reach or you fill up the 23 bits so let me copy the bantisa bits earlier let me copy this given because obviously its fractional part or the mantisa refers to this group of bits so let me rewrite this we have one zero zero one zero zero one zero one one so let me count this we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so based on this count we need to add 13 more zeros to complete the 23 bits of the mantisa part i'm going to add 13 zeros one two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So these are the mantisa bits. One zero zero one zero zero one zero one one and then thirteen zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So this are the mantisa bits. Therefore, 1.611 times 10 raised to 3 is equal to, first we need to write the sine bit. Next bits are the exponent bits 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 so these are the exponent bits and the remaining bits are the mantisa bits so i'll just copy this one And this is our final answer. As an exercise, um, last 2022, the longest flight time for a drone is 30 minutes or 1.8 times 10 raised to 3 seconds. So convert 1.800 times 10 raised to 3 magnitude into a single precision floating point binary number. So pause this video and try to answer this on your own. After your attempt, play the video to see if your result matches the final answer. So here's the final answer. 1.8 times 10 raised to 3. 
in terms of the IEEE 754 standard single precision floating point binary number format, the first bit is equal to zero, which refers to our sign bit. The next eight bits are the exponent bits, which are equal to one zero 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 one zero zero one. And the remaining bits refers to the mantisa bits, which are equal to 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, followed by 16 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is our final answer. So as a quiz, a radiation of 50 Rowan gen can cause radiation sickness. One chest x-ray is equivalent to a radiation of 0.01072 Rowan gens. Hence, 4.664 times 10 raised to 3 chest x-rays can cause radiation sickness. Of course, time interval is not taken into account in this calculation. Now, if you are not one of my students, then you can skip this part. But if you are, please convert 4.664 times 10 raised to 3 magnitude into a single precision floating point binary number. Instructions on how to submit your answer will be given during our class or through our learning management system platform. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.